military workman, developed his hobby of herding dogs many years ago. He discusses how he became interested with this hobby and how he started Way to Me Acres with his wife. My wife and I went to Estes Park, the Scottish Highland Festival. They were having a parade in the mid 80s and they had a unit for the dogs. So we had beardy collies at the time and we said, we'll take our beardy and be in the parade. So we were in the parade and after the parade, we went to the fairgrounds where the Highland Festival was occurring. And it just happened they were doing instinct, herding instinct training. And so we watched Herding Instinct, and I really, really liked it at that point. From that day, I started herding. So I've been in herding about 22, 23 years, and it's grown over the times. I've moved away from the bearded collie, which I still really, really like, and I've gotten border collies because I just like the way border collies work. A few years ago, actually about 22 years ago, I visited a farm with lots of different animals on it. And at that time, my wife and I both said that when we retire from the Air Force, that we were gonna buy an acreage and have a menagerie of animals, and that's what happened. So that's how we got the animals. Actually, the primary animal I was interested in were sheep to train my dogs. So it started with the sheep, and then over, we've been here 11 years, we've just added different animals every year. Terry explains how he got into the professional side of herding dogs. He also discusses how trainers work with dogs. I got into herding like I said, 20, 22 years ago, I uh, started competition, I would say heavy competition about 10 to 12 years ago. And during that time, I've learned a lot about my dogs. And since I've worked with different breeds of dogs, I'm able to give lessons. Uh, one of the advantages I've seen to having dogs and something I never would have gotten to do was to give clinics. Clinics normally are like a three-day intense class. I go to the clinic and I, as the instructor and then people bring their dogs and we work for ten, three to four days intensively on herding. Um, luckily so far this year, actually in the last two years, I've been able to go to Finland for this year and last year and this year I've gone to Sweden. So it's been really something I never would have been able to do and it's nice to be able to take a vacation and get paid while you're on your vacation. I do have some friends that are professional trainers and their whole objective and they make their entire living from training herding dogs. Normally what they do is they'll bring a client's dog and the dog will stay with them for three to four to five months and during that time the clinician or the trainer will spend quite a bit of time with that dog training it. So the professionals do do a lot of herding demonstrate or they'll do a lot of herding trials because they'll run their dogs to prove that they are good clinicians and I'll also run their clients dogs if the clients not able to to run their dog. Terry works with the public to educate them on herding dogs. I was a member of the Nebraska Stock Dog Association and our one primary goal was to get together as friends and just do some herding but we also want to train the public on what herding is. It's kind of a dying art and now you see a lot of four-wheelers herding sheep and goats and and cattle, and we just wanted to kind of keep a tradition going, so we try to educate the public. I've been to several different small fairs where I'll do herding demonstrations to show people what these dogs are capable of. Uh, we also actually talk about nutrition and things that are good for your dogs, you know, health-wise. We talk a little bit about the different breeds, so if you're looking for a dog, probably unless you're on an acreage, a border collie might not be the best bet unless you're willing to take you know, the border collie out to a park and let them run and do those kind of things. They're a high energy dog and they're really not built for apartment living. So we would talk to people about that and we'd make recommendations on dogs that may be better suited for them. Um, but mainly our focus is on educating the public, not only on the dogs, but what herding is and, and a dying art that's slowly going away. There are some challenges that dog herders face with public stereotypes. Uh, I think the main challenge is, especially when we're in public working our dogs, that we, and even when we're not in public with our dogs, that we're humane to the animals that we're working with. We don't hassle, we don't want dogs biting our sheep or our goats. That's part of our livelihood. And so our dogs are trained not to harass livestock or not to injure livestock. So I think a lot of, there's probably a misunderstanding that herding dogs, sheep or goats or cattle that have been herded have a uh, 
pretty bad life because these dogs are chasing them all the time. And in reality, our dogs aren't chasing them. They're moving them from one area to another. So I think the primary thing is to let the public know that we are humane to the animals that we work with. Uh, my place has been called Club Med because of the way I take care of my place. My stock friends don't understand why I do this. They, they, they're in it for a business, I'm in it for a hobby. So yeah, they wanna send their dogs to me when they go on vacation, so I'll take care of their dogs. Terry provides his recommendations for youth and how they can get involved at an early age with herding dogs. I do have some younger clients that, that are t 8 to 10 to 12 years old. And I think it's important because herding is like any sport. You have to be very focused. You have to work with your dog. And I think it really helps younger people when they come out and they work with livestock. They, one, they see how humane you need to be with your livestock. It's two, they're working with the dog. Um, and as far as why we do this, the competition, the clinics and all these things, you build a special bond with your dogs. They're part of the team. You and your dog are a team. And it is, it's a very close knit thing. Uh, rarely do you have a feeling with a pet like you would with a herding dog or another dog, say like a, uh, a hunting dog that you use. Probably right up front, I would try, try to find somebody that is into herding so they can show them the proper way, some of the techniques of herding. It's a really hard sport just to walk out with your dog and start herding sheep. Even the sheep are actually trained to your dogs. That, and it's not a cruel, it's a respect. The sheep respect your dog. And as long as they're moving, the dog doesn't bother them or won't get close to them. And so I think as a started person, you'd want to find somebody in the area that does herd also try to find somebody with your same philosophies on training. My training philosophies are that I'm very humane to my animals. I don't yell and scream at my dogs. I find ways to move my dogs without all the yelling and screaming. And I think uh, for a younger person, they have to find somebody they feel comfortable with. So yeah, probably the primary thing is to find somebody in the sport. I found that most of the people I herd with would love to have somebody come out and work with them, especially younger people. Yeah.